Grace Luanga channel for free meteorology and navigation instruments lessons. Welcome my esteemed viewers welcome to lesson 6 of airplane navigation instruments a program run by Grace Luanga YouTube channel. Grace Luanga. For those watching for the first time, my name is Grace Luanga and my profile has already been given in lesson one presentation. As a reminder, in lesson five, we looked at speed indicator and design, a subtopic of instruments topic. Mark meter and design. I am delighted, therefore, to discuss with you today another topic from the same subtopic. Our topic today is called Mark meter and design. By design, I don't mean a fashion design, but I refer to the internal mechanism used by the mark meter to detect and process the input data. The purpose of the mark meter is to display the aircraft's true airspeed, or TAS, as a proportion or ratio of the local speed of sound. So let us now look at the mark meter, starting with the principle of its operation. Although we know that the local speed of sound depends on temperature, it can also be shown mathematically that the Mach number is derived from dynamic pressure divided by static pressure. So the Mach meter is required to sense dynamic pressure and also static pressure. If we look at the cutaway illustration of a Mach meter, we can see how this is achieved. Static pressure is fed into the instrument case, while an airspeed capsule inside the instrument case is fed with pitot pressure. Expansion or contraction of the airspeed capsule will therefore give us dynamic pressure and movement of the airspeed capsule is transmitted by the airspeed link and the main shaft to move the ratio arm in the direction AB. An altitude capsule is also incorporated within the instrument case. This is a sealed capsule which will expand or contract as the static pressure inside the instrument case changes. Movement of the altitude capsule will move the ratio arm in the direction of CD. A spring-loaded ranging arm transmits the movement of the ratio arm to the pointer mechanism. We can see, therefore, that movement of the pointer results from the interrelationship of the pressures sensed by both the airspeed capsule and the altitude capsule and we can see that the sequence of the linkage movement is that the ratio arm moves the ranging arm which in turn moves the pointer on the dial. Introduction Mark meter and design is one of the most ingenious sub-items in the Mark number system item. The mark meter is used for measuring the aircraft speed above the 300 knots range called the high tass. In order to do this, a mark meter has a slightly modified design compared to airspeed indicator design. In meteorology, the mark meter properties 
are similar to those of the jet stream winds. Therefore, I believe that uh, this lesson six will be beneficial to all of us. What is the jet stream? Jet streams are bands of strong wind that generally blow from west to east all across the globe. Jet streams form when warm air masses meet cold air masses in the atmosphere. Air masses have different temperatures because the sun doesn't heat the whole earth evenly. Areas near the equator are hot and areas near the poles are cold. The warmer air rises up in the atmosphere while cooler air sinks down to replace it. This movement causes an air current. These air currents are high in the atmosphere. On average, they travel about 110 miles per hour. In the winter, when the temperature differences between warm and cold air masses are more dramatic, jet streams can go much faster, 250 miles per hour or more. No matter the season, the primary jet streams only travel from west to east because of how Earth rotates on its axis. Jet streams are located in the middle and upper parts of a layer of the atmosphere called the troposphere. This is the height in the atmosphere where airplanes fly as well. That means airplanes can fly in the jet stream, especially when they're headed in the same direction the jet stream is blowing. This is why an airplane flying from west to east can make the trip faster than an airplane traveling the same route from east to west. Objectives of the lesson. By the end of the lesson six, the viewer will be able to explain the following magmeter terms by meteorological examples where possible. Compressibility, Mach number M, critical Mach number Macrit, blockage error, maneuver induced error, dynamic pressure, pitot pressure, static pressure, and pioneers of the magmeter and design science. In this lesson on the magmeter, we are going to start by looking at the speed of sound and its relationship to temperature. The speed of sound is known as Mach 1. The value of Mach 1 depends on the temperature of the air and will vary as temperature changes. The colder the air, the lower the speed of sound will be. The speed of sound for a given temperature is known as the local speed of sound, or the LSS. At sea level in the International Standard Atmosphere, conditions of plus 15 degrees Celsius, the local speed of sound is 661 knots. We can calculate a local speed of sound by using the formula shown here, or we can use a CRP5 or similar navigation computer. Let us calculate the local speed of sound using the formula first. In this formula, the local speed of sound in knots equals 38.95 times the square root of the static air temperature in degrees absolute. Note the formula uses degrees absolute. To convert from degrees Celsius to degrees absolute, just add 273 degrees, as 0 degrees Celsius equals plus 273 degrees absolute. Degrees absolute may also be known as degrees Kelvin. Let us work through an example to find the local speed of sound. If the static air temperature is minus 50 degrees Celsius, what will the local speed of sound be? Remember we are working in degrees absolute, so the static air temperature is minus 50 plus 273, which equals 223 degrees absolute or Kelvin. Applying our formula, local speed of sound equals 38.95 times the square root of 223, which gives us a local speed of sound of 582 knots. Using the CRP5 navigation computer, or similar, 
and using the same air temperature of minus 50 degrees Celsius that we use for the formula calculation, find the airspeed window on the navigation computer. Turn the inner scale around until an arrow marked Mach number index appears in the window and place this arrow against the air temperature of minus 50 degrees Celsius on the air temperature scale. Now look for the number 10 on the inner scale. We will utilize the number 10 as Mach 1 for the purpose of this exercise. Opposite, on the outer scale, read off the figure 582. We will designate this as 582 knots, which is the same local speed of sound as our formula derived answer. Definitions We will begin by defining dynamic pressure, pitot pressure, static pressure, and Mach number M. Details of the definitions. The difference between the static pressure and the pitot pressure is the kinetic energy called dynamic pressure. In meteorology, static pressure is called the potential energy. Mach number M is a dimensionless quantity. The Mach meter principle, therefore, is a differential equation between pitot pressure and static pressure. The Mach number is the ratio between the aircraft's true airspeed and the local speed of sound, which is abbreviated as LSS. Therefore, the Mach number is equal to the true airspeed divided by the local speed of sound. But we might be wondering, why is it important to know the Mach number? Well, the thing is that as an aircraft approaches the speed of sound, the airflow over certain parts of the aircraft can reach Mach 1, thus generating a shockwave, as we can see in this example. Here, this aircraft is actually flying at Mach 0.82, which means that the aircraft as such has not yet reached the speed of sound. However, despite this, the airflow in some parts of the aircraft can accelerate and reach Mach 1, as in this case over the wing. Now, in these situations, aircraft that are not designed for supersonic flight will experience certain negative effects, such as an increase in drag, high speed buffet, Mach tuck, and reduced effectiveness of flight controls. So, in order to avoid these adverse effects, it is important to know the exact speed at which the shockwaves start to appear. The speed at which this happens is known as the critical Mach number. And it is defined as the Mach number at which the airflow over any part of the aircraft reaches the speed of sound, or in other words, reaches Mach 1. Let's now see the relationship between the local speed of sound and the Mach number. As we know, as altitude increases, the air temperature decreases. And this results in a reduction in the local speed of sound, since it is directly related to air temperature as we can see in this formula. Now, looking again at the Mach number formula, we can see that the speed of sound is inversely proportional to the Mach number. This means in other words, that if the speed of sound decreases, the Mach number increases. That it is important to have an instrument on board, that indicates the current Mach number of the aircraft. And that instrument is the Mach meter. This instrument can have different presentations. We can find it as an individual analog instrument or incorporate it in other instruments or systems. Let's first look at the analog Mach meter. This instrument uses the relationship between dynamic pressure and static pressure to determine the current Mach number. This means that this is a pitted static instrument. But we might be wondering, why does this instrument use static and dynamic pressure, if the Mach number is related to the true airspeed and the speed of sound, and we obtain that the Mach number is proportional to the dynamic pressure divided by the static pressure. That's why the Mach meter can use this pressures to determine the Mach number. Applications of the Mach meter The Mach meter is accurate for aircraft speeds greater than 300 knots. In this speed range, called the high task, the atmosphere 
is treated like a, a compressible medium. The following is the magmeter output. Hiatus, Mach number M and critical Mach number M crit. In order to do this, a Mach meter has a slightly modified design compared to ASI. A Mach meter design incorporates two orthogonal capsules, a pitot pressure capsule and a static pressure capsule. The purpose of the Mach meter is to display the aircraft's true airspeed, or TAS, as a proportion or ratio of the local speed of sound. So let us now look at the Mach meter, starting with the principle of its operation. Although we know that the local speed of sound depends on temperature, it can also be shown mathematically that the Mach number is derived from dynamic pressure divided by static pressure. So the Mach meter is required to sense dynamic pressure and also static pressure. If we look at the cutaway illustration of a Mach meter, we can see how this is achieved. Static pressure is fed into the instrument case, while an airspeed capsule inside the instrument case is fed with pitot pressure. Expansion or contraction of the airspeed capsule will therefore give us dynamic pressure and movement of the airspeed capsule is transmitted by the airspeed link and the main shaft to move the ratio arm in the direction AB. An altitude capsule is also incorporated within the instrument case. This is a sealed capsule which will expand or contract as the static pressure inside the instrument case changes. Movement of the altitude capsule will move the ratio arm in the direction of CD. A spring-loaded ranging arm transmits the movement of the ratio arm to the pointer mechanism. We can see, therefore, that movement of the pointer results from the interrelationship of the pressures sensed by both the airspeed capsule and the altitude capsule. And we can see that the sequence of the linkage movement is that the ratio arm moves the ranging arm, which in turn moves the pointer on the dial. Blockage error. The Mach meter suffers several errors. The most significant one is the blockage error. Knowing and understanding how a Mach meter reads during a blockage is critical for safety. Since the Mach meter principle is a differential equation, of the pitot pressure and the static pressure, blockage error can be explained as follows. When pitot gets blocked, the Mach meter overreads on climb and vice versa. When static gets blocked, the Mach meter underreads on climb and vice versa. When pitot and static get blocked, the Mach meter remains neutral. It all began on May the 31st, 2009. Shortly after 2200 hours UTC, universal time, the time standard used in aviation, Air France Flight 447 took off from Rio de Janeiro, heading for Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport. It was an Airbus A330-200 series, carrying 228 people, or souls, as they say in the industry, 216 passengers, 12 crew members. Four hours into its 11-hour journey, things started to go wrong. At 0200, the plane entered a thunderstorm with strong turbulence, and the pilots made a short course correction to avoid the bad weather. Then a problem with the plane's pitot tubes, the small probes that are used to measure the speed of the aeroplane. It's believed they got clogged with supercooled ice. The speed sensors iced over. In the cockpit, 
the computers behaved as they were supposed to. The autopilot disengaged. The plane's co-pilot, who was the pilot flying, reacted by pulling back on the side stick, and the plane started to climb. Within a minute, the plane had climbed to 38,000 feet and was outside its certified parameters. There was a stall warning as the plane's airspeed dropped dramatically, and the plane fell out of the sky, falling at nearly 11,000 feet a minute. As the earlier reports make clear, over the next three and a half minutes, there was confusion in the cockpit as the pilots tried and failed to regain control of the aircraft. So far, in the early reports, the accident investigators from France have been focusing on a series of sustained mistakes by at least one of the pilots. Finally, after falling 38,000 feet, unable to regain control, the plane plunged into the sea and sank to the ocean floor. Days later, crews found wreckage in the equatorial waters between Brazil and Africa, 570 miles northeast of Natal, Brazil. It would be two years and several searches later before the so-called black box, the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorders would be recovered. Now, more than three years later, the final report is to be published. The investigators will not apportion blame to the crew or the plane or the equipment. What they will do is tell us what went wrong. Richard Quest, CNN, London. Pioneers of the Magmeter and Design Science. Ernest Waldfried Joseph Wiesel Mack, 1838-1916, was an Austrian physicist and philosopher, noted for his contributions to physics, such as the set of shock waves. The ratio of one's speed to that of sound is named the Mach number in his honor. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to be talking about Mach and Reynolds numbers as you might have seen from the title of the video. So let's start with the Mach number first. Mach number can tell us how fast the airflow is. So for example, let's say I told you the airflow is 200 meters per second. Or I tell you the aircraft is flying at 700 miles per hour. Is it fast or is it not? What is the standard for being fast? If you think about it, 200 meters per second is pretty fast because people can only cover that distance in 20 seconds or about that time. But what measurement could we find to figure out how fast the aircraft is? It turns out it's the speed of sound. So if you don't remember, speed of sound is 343 meters per second and it's denoted by letter A. So what would be the way to figure out how fast 200 meters per second is compared to the speed of sound? Well, that will be the Mach number. The Mach number is just the ratio of the velocity of the airflow or the aircraft to the speed of sound. Mach number, it is named after Austrian physicist Ernst Mach and is denoted by capital letter M and it's the ratio of the speed of the airflow to the speed of sound. So let's figure out how fast actually 200 meters per second is. We find Mach number for 200 meters per second. So divide 200 by 343 so we'll get 0 0.58 and meters per second will cancel out so it turns out that Mach number is a dimensionless number because it's the ratio of two speeds or velocities a problem solution the following spill question 
was set by CAA and it is available in a book Meteorology for Airplane Navigation Instruments by Grace Luanga. Question. Explain briefly why the magnetometer does not suffer from errors due to changes in the air density and air temperature. Good morning, everybody. Hope you guys are doing all right. It's freezing cold as hell, it's about 4 to 8 degrees around that and we are in Vienna. Actually, Beata, she had the idea to go to this place, we rented the car. It's about what? What time is it? Seven. It's about 7, we're gonna have something to eat and we're gonna go to Hallstatt. It's about 3, three hours, 20 minutes drive and uh, yeah, we have to refuel our stomachs because it's gonna be a long way. <laughs> they actually gave us a smart. Thank God it's the new ones because the old ones, they are very bad to drive. These ones are not that bad. We finally got to Alstad. It's a village, very, very small village, uh, about three hours, three hours and a half from Vienna. That was the time that took us to get here. And this village is so small that I would bet that in three, four, five minutes with a good run, you can go from one side to the other side. Yeah. It's very, very small. It's a very small village by the lake, and everywhere you look, you're gonna have an amazing view. There's no way you're gonna look anywhere and you're gonna have a bad view. It's just amazing landscapes. So almost everything here in the city because the city is quite small so it takes like uh, maybe an hour or two to see the whole city now we're gonna go all the way to the top let me see if I can show you there all the way there oh. and to get there we're gonna take this lift which is very very steep 
should be quite fun. And once we get up there, we have an amazing view over the whole lake, the whole Hallstatt, and on the way down, we take the toboggan, which I can't show you from now, but you'll see it later on. It's, it's, it's gonna be fun. So we made it all the way up. Uh, you take the cable card, funicular, whatever you want to call it, all the way here. It costs 18 euros. And let me tell you, the view, it's worth every single penny. It's an amazing, amazing view, guys. Time. Viewers, because of time, the general Mach number and design theory cannot be fully covered here but it is available in a book meteorology for airplane navigation instruments by chris Luanga. many thanks to all of you who have shared your video and sound clips with me in order to make the lesson a success try to solve that superior question and i will correct your answer meanwhile you have any message you can send me an email or sms i am always available 24 7. subscribe and benefit more from our channel as i look forward to meeting you i beg you stop here thank you very much for watching me and god bless you hey guys welcome at my youtube channel and also I'm no native speaker, I'm from Germany. I decided to make this video in English too, because there is a lot of interest. So the question is, why do jets need a Mach meter? Why, why isn't the, the speedometer enough? Okay, an aircraft standing at the ground will absorbing uh, sound waves in concentric circles as you see here so if the aircraft starts to fly with a speed below the sonic speed the sound waves will accumulate in front of the aircraft they follow the aircraft, but they are not uh, going concentric. So, to come back to the question, why is there a Mach meter? As you see, this instrument from a Hawker Hunter, a, a subsonic jet fighter, has a restriction at Mach 0.7. The case is that some areas of the fuselage of the airframe reaching speed of sound faster than other areas. This is depending on, for example, the airfoil accelerating the air above the wing. And so every airplane has its specific maximum Mach number and this is no fixed value this depends on the height the air density and other parameters so the pilot is interested in not in the absolute speed uh, the, the speed above ground the pilot wants to know when his airplane reaching the uh, vulnerable, the, the, the dangerous Mach number. Finally, I show you pictures of, of two supersonic pa passenger aircraft, the Russian Tu-144 and the French-British Concorde. I hope you like my video if you like please like and subscribe 
and comment and thanks for watching.